These people, as we know, are paying themselves huge salaries. They're really taking liberties with taxpayers' money, staying in luxury hotels and mini bars and what have you at our expense. I mean, this is it's an outrage. £250 taxi fare. If you tell a normal working person that people are using taxpayers' money to have £250 taxi fares home at our expense, they say it's an outrage. Well, we're here today over the compulsory redundancies that have been threatened by EACT. I'm here today to support the teachers at Crest Academy who are on strike against unfair compulsory redundancies. We've got NUT, NAS, UWT and ATL members all on strike today. We're absolutely united in saying how they're behaving, we are not going to tolerate it. Uh, as part of the initial agreement, there was a clear understanding given by EAC, who, who were taking over the academy from Brent, that they would not be looking to make any of the staff redundant. This actually quickly fell apart once they'd taken over the school, and we're now facing a situation where four out of the ten members of the senior management team are being made compulsory redundant, there is at least two other members of staff who are likely to be made compulsory redundant as well. Sir Bruce Liddington paying himself £265,000 a year. That's more than the salary of 10 newly qualified teachers. It's quite concerning really when the amount of money that the man's being paid, especially as it's fairly near to the amount that has been taken out of the budget by EACT to pay for their management costs. And it's, uh, you know, five six staff are threatened with, with redundancy, possibly more, who knows what's going to happen in the future. When you see in The Guardian today that Sir Bruce Liddington has spent nearly £1,500 on two nights in a luxury hotel... But have they got the money to pay? Of course they had. They had, I think it was £50 million from the government. I heard that they had £1.5 million. Apparently they said they were going to put up themselves to persuade Brent Council to do this as a charitable donation and what have you. Well, Charitable donation, charity begins, it looks like, with themselves in their own pockets. What, what an outfit this is. I mean, I, we're going to have to complain to the Charity Commission, not that they should have needed us to do so, it's been in the news. So it's just like one of these things on Watchdog, isn't it, where you've got a dodgy firm doing dodgy things, so what you do is change the name of the top person, put another person you know, in as the top person, and you carry on, change your name and carry on doing the same things. It's marvellous. What a thing to do. Any time you're in any trouble, you're doing something dodgy, just change the name, put somebody else in charge of it, and carry right on doing the same thing. There is protection for these academy sponsors. They are not even covered by the freedom of information legislation. It's quite frightening, really, that there, there is no accountability. We're, it sort of feels like we're being run by a, a faceless society that no one really knows who they are. I think people in the public won't understand how a body like an academy, a sponsor, can get its money entirely from the taxpayer and not be subject to freedom of information. It is a complete outrage that that's the situation. It needs to be changed absolutely right now. You've stood up, OK, it's absolutely the right thing to do. We're not going to take it. And if they carry on, what we will say is we do not want you to carry on running this school. We insist it goes back to local authority control. They won't like that, believe me. They won't like that at all. The ATL, the NASUWT and the NUT acting together to defend teachers and to defend education. Long may it continue. Victory to you in your struggle. Yeah. 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 We will win. Yes, we will win. Yes, we can. Thank <laughs> <laughs>